just a hard fighting soldier and I'm on the battlefield. I'm just a hard fighting soldier and I'm on the battlefield. I keep on bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I give. I'm just a hard fighting soldier and I'm on, on, I'm a hard fighting soldier and I'm on, and I'm on that battlefield. I'm just a hard fighting soldier and I'm on the battlefield. I keep on bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I give. Well, I've got a helmet on my head, and in my head, a sword and shield. I've got a helmet on my head, in my hands. Uh, a sword and a shield. I've got a helmet on my head. In my head, a sword and shield. I'll keep on bringing souls to Jesus by the surf. Lord, I'm just a fighting soldier. And I I'm a hard on a battlefield. I'm just a hard fighting soldier, Lord. My soul's down here on a battlefield. I'm just a hard fighting soldier, and I'm on. I'll keep on. Souls to Jesus by the service that I give. And I've got to walk right, talk right, sing right, and pray right on the battlefield. I've got to walk right and talk right, sing right, and pray right on the battlefield. I've got to walk right and talk right, sing right and pray right on the battlefield. I'll keep on bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I give. I'll keep on bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I Amen. That's what we certainly ought to be. Hard fighting soldiers. Uh, whether you want to be or not, you're going to have to be because the devil is going to make it hard. And you're going to have to fight the good fight of faith. Uh, so if you're going to be a soldier for the Lord, you're going to be a hard fighting soldier. But that's all right. The victory is already assured. The victory is already won uh, because of our victorious uh, captain, our victorious savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So we're thankful tonight to uh, be here once again. Thankful tonight for those of you who have uh, come out to study with us as we again try to <clears throat> say some things that will hopefully, uh, that will strengthen our families uh, that we can have uh, functional, uh, healthy families, even in the midst of the things that we have to deal with and endure in, in this life. And uh, we're glad to see those that are present. Uh, we hear that we have a number who are uh, uh, participating by way of media, and we appreciate that. But uh, I would sure enough feel better if I could see your face. Uh, but, uh, I, I know how it is. Some of you came straight from work to, to get here and so forth. And we just appreciate that. Uh, we appreciate your uh, support and your encouragement 
and I hope, trust, and pray that as we uh, study together on tonight that all of us will be enlightened, that we'll be strengthened, and if we're not hitting the mark, just, uh, just let me know, amen. We can make uh, some adjustments, but uh, the, the approach that we've chosen, uh, we hope that will be fruitful for us as we, <coughs> we uh, uh, begin from what happened in the life of Noah and we accent it uh, where God told Noah to, uh, as he built the ark, to pitch it within and without with pitch, to make it waterproof, to make it stormproof, to, to cover it inside and out with something that was going to help it uh, during the midst of the storm. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm keying off of that and uh, sharing with us what I believe is, is some of that pitch, some of that resonant substance that will help the boat of our family stay afloat. Uh, not only stay afloat, but uh, uh, you know, it, it, it can be a, a luxury cruise no matter uh, what the weather is on the outside. Amen, somebody. Uh, because any cruise with God is a luxury cruise. Even when there's a storm, uh, Jesus must have thought it was a luxury cruise because he was sleeping <laughs> while the wind was blowing and, and the rain was beating and, and the water was getting in the boat. Jesus was sleeping. He was on a luxury cruise. Uh, and when those disciples woke him up, he asked him, oh, ye of little faith, you know, why did you doubt? Uh, they had to remember that the Lord was on board, so... Uh, it was going to be all right. Let me very quickly, uh, as far as those who've been trying to keep notes in the booklet, uh, were there some blanks that, because of the uh, uh, problems we had with the PowerPoint, were there some blanks that uh, were missed that I need to catch, up, catch you up on? Any blanks that were missed on pages one through, uh, one through uh, three, one through four? Top of page four, any blanks? Okay, we're in good shape. All right, uh, if not, we'll get those back to uh, the brethren and uh, 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 you can make sure that you, that you, have, uh, that, you have that uh, information. So we're gonna pick up tonight then uh, with uh, uh, B there on page number four as we continue to talk about these things that are gonna help uh, to, uh, to waterproof, uh, waterproof the boat. So we talked last night about being Christ-like, being Christ-centered, that we got our eyes on Jesus and that every family member will learn to interact uh, in a way that shows that Christ is, is living in them. He's got to be uh, the one who directs our way uh, because if we're left to our own devices, if I acted like I wanted to act in my marriage and my family, they'd be in a whole lot of trouble that I would too. Amen, somebody. And, uh, and I'm glad to have a, a wife of 51 years who has the Lord that's, that's, living, uh, that's living in her. Uh, so uh, our second installment uh, in these uh, particular graces that are going to strengthen our family is that of is that of commitment is that of commitment uh, the the the, the uh, research again uh, that that we have referred to uh, uh, talks about the fact that that families that are strong uh, are families that uh, are that are committed to one another uh, when we talk about commitment, uh, Paul said in 2 Timothy 1.12 that I'm, uh, I know that what I have committed uh, to the Lord, uh, that he's going to keep it against that day. Uh, Paratismai, that is, uh, is a word that means to give over to the trust of another. To be committed means to be emotionally and mentally bound to a particular course of action. What's our course of action? Have a functional family. Ha have a faithful family. Have a family that's going to make it through the storm. That's what we, got, we, we will focus on. That's what our commitment is. And, and therefore, if that's what I'm committed to, then it's going to govern 
uh, how I interact uh, with e each other, uh, with others within uh, the family. Uh, of course, we can see that certainly when it comes to marriage, Romans 7, as Paul was teaching about the moving aside of the uh, law of Moses, and he made an example of uh, how a woman is bound to her husband as long as they live, uh, that if, if the husband dies, then she's free to marry another. So uh, the idea is, is that uh, commitment, uh, that I know that that's a lost art in our uh, world today. We hear statistics about uh, 50 percent of marriages uh, yeah, today ending in divorce. Not a true st statistic. What, what, what it means is, is that for every two million that get married, then on the other end there's one million that's getting uh, divorced. Uh, and that, that happens uh, sometimes uh, over the course of time, some in a short time, some in a longer uh, time. Uh, so till death do us part, uh, is not, <laughs> is what we might say standing before the preacher or the judge, but uh, uh, sometimes what we mean is until I get tired or until you mess up too much or uh, amen somebody. Uh, but, but commitment uh, is, is there. Let not, Paul said in 1 Corinthians t uh, chapter 7, 10, 11, talks about the husband, let them not depart from one another. God intends for the husband and wife to stay together. And as I said, uh, when it comes to God's norm for the family, uh, the, God's ideal is mom, dad, and the kids. Dad, mom, and the kids. Husband and wife who have children and bring them up together in the nurture and in the uh, admonition of, uh, of the Lord. That's, that's God's ideal. That's what uh, God wants. And so that's what we need to be uh, committed to. And, and if any younger ones out there and you're listening, uh, uh, then uh, I, I would encourage you uh, to, to do premarital sessions uh, to, to, to learn what uh, it, 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 it's all about, to learn how to uh, adjust uh, because you want to go into it uh, with the idea that we're going to stay together when, when I do premarital or when I do a ceremony with people, with, young, with anybody. I tell them this. I said, uh, I said uh, you know, if after you get married, uh, you, you get tempted to, to not stay together, see me first. And if I'm dead and passed on, see me first. <laughs> okay? So uh, we want to be we want to recognize the fact that, that God wants us to be uh, committed uh, to uh, the, re the relationship uh, and uh, not, not depart. So it, it's, it's commitment, it's commitment. Again, as I said, it starts within the marriage but also in the family because I believe that biblically what we're talking about is a covenant relationship and not a contract relationship. All right? Uh, we're talking about a covenant relationship. When God, again, talked to the people uh, there uh, in the book of Malachi about what they were doing to marriage and not being fair and, and faithful to, uh, the, to their, their wives, uh, he talked about the idea uh, of, of covenant. Uh, again, we looked at this, but... In, in chapter 2 of Malachi, verse 13, he said, This second thing you do, you cover the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping and crying. Uh, so there's a couple of folk crying here. It's the wives who are being wrong, but I believe God's shedding some tears too over this, this situation. And they are saying, wait a minute, now what you talking about? For, for, for what reason? He said, because the Lord has been witness between you and the wife of your youth, with whom you have dealt treacher treacherously, yet she is your companion and your wife by covenant. But did he not make them one, having a remnant of the spirit, and why one? So that he may have a godly offspring. God says that relationship is one of covenant. And there's a difference between a covenant and a contract. All right, my roof leaking and you're a roofer, we can have a contract relationship. 
you agree that you're going to repair my roof, you're going to put a certain weight of shingles on it and all that kind of thing. And I agree if you do that work, then I will pay you so that uh, if you don't put the shingles on, then I don't have to pay you. All right. Uh, because that's the way a contract is. But covenant is different. Uh, for instance, you remember when Isaac was old, his eyes were dim, and Jacob and his mother connived together to deceive uh, 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 Isaac so that Jacob, rather than Esau, would receive that right of the firstborn. Uh, you know, that they, they, they put it, dressed him in some of Esau's clothes so he would smell like Esau, uh, put animal skin on his arm so he would feel like uh, Esau. Uh, he wasn't a good ventriloquist because uh, Jacob said, uh, Isaac said, you feel like Esau, but you sound like Jacob. So he had a little trouble with disguise and the voice. Uh, they disguised the, the, the preparation of the meat and so forth and so on. And the, the birthright was passed on to Jacob. All right, Esau comes back later and they discover what's going on. Now, why didn't Isaac just call everybody back in and say, Jacob, you bad boy, you and mom, you ought to be ashamed of yourself conniving with this boy to do that. I'm taking it back and giving it to the firstborn Isaac. Why, why didn't Jacob do that? Because covenant, once it was spoken, it was spoken. All right, uh, in the book of Esther, when, when, uh, when Haman fooled the king into signing that decree uh, that on a certain day that Jews could be killed, and once they discovered what was going on, uh, the king didn't call everybody back in and say, I undo what I wrote. No, what he did was sign another decree that allowed the Jews to carry weapons, which were going to take care of that. All right? So, uh, what, 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 what's this about? I believe it's the idea of covenant. That once spoken, it is kept. All right? You look at God and you look at Israel. God made a covenant. Now, we know that Israel messed up. Israel didn't keep the covenant always. But what does God do? He helps it. He works it so that uh, eventually it's going to come to pass what he'd covenanted even back with Abraham, that, that, that in your seed, all nations are going to, of the earth are going to be blessed. So even though Israel, of course, you know in the prophets, God even said, I'm going to give you a writing of divorcement. I mean, he got, ups, he got upset with Israel as his wife. But nonetheless, at the end of it, God keeps the covenant that he made, even though there were the ups and downs in between on the part of Israel, not upon the part of God, and he allowed some things to happen. So uh, 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 God's relationship uh, with Israel uh, then uh, is a covenant. What's a covenant? Uh, I see it as an irrevocable and unbreakable agreement that is kept no matter what. Irrevocable, an unbreakable agreement that is kept no matter what. We're talking about covenant, all right? We're talking about covenant. Even when you look at Israel in Deuteronomy chapters 5 through 8, God makes covenant with them. God <clears throat> makes some promises to them. They say to God, we're going to keep the covenant. He, they, uh, in, in chapter 7, he ex says to them, you're my chosen people out of all the nations uh, of the earth, not because you're greater or mightier than they, but because I made a covenant with your father Abraham. So they were the children of God, the children of Israel. They were in a covenant relationship with a God Almighty. So God kept covenant with them. He made some promises that were irrevocable and unbreakable that God is going to bring about, as we said, no matter what. All right? Uh, especially in the bringing of Jesus Christ. So I'm, I'm of the, uh, of, of the uh, belief that uh, as we approach family, that we approach it from the aspect that we are in a covenant relationship. And I've got a part in this covenant as a husband or as a wife or as a son or as a daughter or as a mother or as a father that I'm going to keep no matter what. It's a commitment because when we make that commitment, it's not just 
you and me. It's not just she and me. God says, in Malachi, I'm a part of this, okay? So when it comes to uh, the husband and wife, God is a part of this covenant. Again, with Christ being the center. Uh, so a covenant is based upon agape love, which we're going to also talk about uh, a bit tonight. It's based on agape love. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's agape love. Uh, let, me, let me not get started on that one because we'll cover that more later. It's independent of the actions of others. Even though Israel was not always what Israel promised to be, God always kept him. He was going to bring this, keep this remnant, all right? Uh, when the kingdom was divided, uh, we know that Israel, the northern kingdom, didn't come back together as a nation, but the remnant came within Judah and God kept his covenant. So independent of Israel's actions, God kept his covenant. Independent. And you know Israel really acted up sometime, didn't you? All right. Uh, and then it, 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 a covenant is as a promise that's fulfilled uh, regardless. Uh, a promise that's fulfilled regardless. It seeks uh, self-sacrifice. Uh, uh, it is a commitment uh, of body, of soul, and of spirit. And then the same is true when we're talking about the family. Parents, children, we want to include God in this connection. And so our relationship is a relationship of covenant. Promise kept. Promise kept. No matter what. That I will love you till, you know, death do us part and, and even... And even beyond that, okay? So uh, it, it, uh, we, must, we must approach this, I, I, I contend, because of the fact that, that uh, uh, when you look even at, at some of the literature, that one of the, one of the uh, characteristics uh, of families is that of, of commitment, all right? Is that of commitment. Uh, this is high on the list in fact, this is number one on, on many lists of the surveys when it comes to uh, successful families. And, uh, you know, we can, we can even see that from the beginning. Uh, God brought the man to the woman. Adam said, this is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. And for this one cause, a man shall leave his father and mother and do what? Cleave. cleave. He shall cleave to his wife. Cleave means to be joined to, okay? Uh, 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 God, uh, God uh, uh, connected them together. And, and Adam had the understanding that I got to cleave to Eve, all right? I've got to cleave to Eve. Now, of course, maybe that cleaving part might have had some come into play uh, why Adam ate the fruit. We don't know. The Bible does not explain. We know that the woman was deceived, uh, Paul says in Timothy, uh, and, and not the man. But just some of that cleaving might be in, been a part of that in some people's, uh, in some people's uh, estimation. So uh, God intended that the husband and wife be committed to one another and that the family be committed to each other. Uh, one example is seen in, in the book of uh, Nehemiah, chapter 4. The people were in the midst of rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem when the enemies threatened to attack them. Uh, in in uh, Nehemiah, chapter 4, verses 7 and 8, uh, Nehemiah uh, told the people uh, to get ready to fight. And his words show that that was a commitment to family because in verse 14, he said, Do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord great and awesome and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. He didn't say y'all fight each other. Uh, hello, somebody. You, you fight together those forces that are coming from the outside. Okay? So when we are committed, commitment means that Family is prioritized, going back to the slide, family is prioritized over other things. Uh, because research shows that functioning families have a sense of importance of the family. To them, family is held in high esteem and is made a high priority. 
There's so many things that can pull families away from being family. There's work, there is friends, uh, there are individual uh, interests, but the healthy family learns to put family first, right? You know, there was a time if you mess with one member of the family, you, you, you caught it from everybody in the family. Nobody was left out there by themselves. Uh, and, and because the family is a priority, uh, there is, a, there is a, a lot of energy invested in the family and a lot of attention given to the family. They prefer to be with each other rather than with others. And I know some of you who got teenagers are saying, Brother Hey, what in the world are you talking about? But you just, you just stay with me now, stay with me. Uh, yeah, uh, each member of the family may have their own personal interests and their friends, but they also must make time to spend together uh, as a family and investing in the good of the family. And when it comes to two parent families, the husband and the wife in the home set the example by being committed to one another and to the marriage, all right? And when it is a two-parent home, the foundation of that home, uh, again, is the marital relationship. That must be kept intact, that must be built upon because so much of what happens with the children is, flows from, from, from the husband and the wife. Uh, in counseling, uh, you know, counsel will tell you that sometimes Children act out, act up, maybe at school, because of what's going on at home with mom and dad. Okay? They, they see mom and dad struggling, and as much as you try to hide it, they pick up on it. And what, 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 what happens in the interaction is, is that when the child acts out, this mom and dad that have been fighting come together. Now the child is not thinking this out, all right? But then what continues to happen is if that struggle between the couple continues, then the child acts out, they don't, they're not thinking, I'm gonna help mom and dad out by getting in trouble and suspended from school. That's not what they're thinking, okay? But that becomes a part of the interaction is that some children's behaviors otherwise is not because they're bad children or whatever, that kind of thing. Sometimes you have to go into the home and work with the family situation because just working with the child and sending them back to that situation when they don't have the expertise yet to deal with that kind of stuff in the house, okay, is not going to work. So, so many times in my counseling years, you know, people bring their children in, and after working with the child a little while, I, 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 I'm saying, mom and dad, y'all come too, okay? Because, and then sometimes I, I end up leaving the child because working with little ones wasn't the best thing for me anyway, so I would prefer that, but sometimes, the, it was the child dropping out of the counseling so we can get mom and dad together and then once mom and dad got together that behavior that became necessary for that child to help mom and dad come together was no longer needed or no longer necessary, okay? So when it's a two-parent home, the foundation of that home is a marital relationship. Remember I mentioned from Psalm 128 last night, your wife is the fruitful vine. The vine's got to stay connected. Your children are the olive plants. Olive plants can be cut off a piece of it and get put in its own pot, okay? Which is what you want to eventually happen if you have children at home, right? You want them to get their own pot, huh? Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. So you can look forward to the day where you can go to their house and turn on every light in the house and leave it on. <laughs> Hey, man. Oh, all the fun stuff you can do once they got their own pot. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Make them buy the food and you eat up everything in the refrigerator. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So the, so the marriage uh, uh, certainly 
uh, must, must be a, a, a priority. Now that, that can be difficult under a couple of circumstances. Uh, when there are children that are not in the home from a previous relationship or the parents uh, require some assistance. Uh, some mates make the choice to do things for their children that are not in the home and parents uh, when they don't have the wholehearted cooperation of their spouse. And, and be sure, the Bible teaches that children ought to care for their parents. First, first Timothy 5 and verse number 8. We are responsible to, 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 to help, to take care, to care for our parents. But it, it is important to gain the cooperation and the agreement of the spouse when we do things. Don't let it divide your marriage because you're going out here sneaking and doing stuff for your mama that your wife don't know about. Love mama, all right? And mama, I ain't telling your son not to love you now. I'm be writing in to Newark Church of Christ first about what Brother Hayes said. But uh, the, the marriage takes priority. And when it comes to taking care of those on the outside, I'm just saying there needs to be some agreement, all right? Uh, because secrets can destroy a family, destroy a marriage. Also, that can be a, a, a challenge when there are grown children in the home or grown children that have moved back home. The temptation is to do for that child what they should be doing for themselves. And sometimes the marriage partners are not on the same page. Uh, but you have to remember your relationship in the marriage uh, is, 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 is the priority. Uh, because y'all not together because, because one of y'all thinks that he's too hard on that son that is a young adult that has moved back home and wants to live by his own rules. And, 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 and don't, don't, don't y'all don't kick me out. I know y'all came, gang here came here expecting, you, you expect to hear from somebody that, that's been perfect all their lives, have a perfect family. We are the Cleavers of the Huxtables who never had any issues or never had any problems. I'm sorry, that's not me. So sister girl may think you're too hard. And brother man think you're too soft. Okay, and, 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 and sometimes what things happen where the interaction between brother man and sister girl are kind of driving a little bit of a wedge there, okay? Because the communication process there seems to spill over uh, uh, in, in other ways, okay? And I thank God, I, I, you know, when I talked about the influence of God, I thank God that, that God looked down and saw the Hazes needed some help. All right? And, and what happened was that somehow or another, we, we ended up with the opportunity to go be trained to be facilitators of the, uh, uh, then it was called His Needs, Her Needs, uh, uh, Interactive Marriage Enrichment uh, Seminar. Uh, I think it's called Dynamic Marriage now, uh, Nashville, uh, Tennessee. In fact, uh, for the leaders here, they have a program, a weekend program for couples that are really having trouble. Uh, we've sent uh, 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 at least one couple uh, to that uh, seminar. So they have a, a weekend program. But anyway, in order to, to, to present it, you had to go through it. Okay, so we went through the training and we went through it and it was a God scene for our relationship. And we were able to, to talk easier and discover that, you know, like when, 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 when brother man starts saying something about something that boy did, all right, instead of sister girl saying something that, that I ended up saying something that I shouldn't have said, like, all right, Perry Mason. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was being offended. That, that offended her. That, was, that wasn't the thing to do. Okay. So we, we learned, we discovered that, hey, 
uh, we got we we, we got to work 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 our way uh, uh, through this. So if I do say something, before you start trying to show me the other side, say I hear what you're saying. What you're saying is okay. And so uh, uh, when 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 I could feel like that I was being heard, it was easy for me to hear. Okay? So, you know, when, when, when those grown ones come back home, uh, uh, you know, I, I had to do some research on that at East Jackson. We had several members uh, that were kind of going through some similar things with young adults being back uh, in, in the house. Um, and uh, it's not always a bad thing. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is that, that, that you, if, there, if you are husband and wife in the home, don't let, in, don't, don't let the devil step in and use anything. God will bless you if you open yourself up to him to find a way for you all to not only keep your relationship strong with each other, but be able to assist that young adult in getting their own pot. <laughs> all right? <laughs> all right? Uh, so, so uh, you know, you just, just keep that, keep that uh, in, in, in mind. Uh, again, that's what I just talked about. Marriage relationship uh, is primary. Uh, even when it comes to the church family, can I put a station identification here? Amen. Uh, church ought to be a, a primary thing in our lives, the Lord's church. That's serving the Lord and being together with the saints of God. Seeking first, that's in the Bible somewhere though, ain't it? Seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Uh, so the church family ought to be, amen, a priority. I hate it. I, I, I hate it to hear any member of the body of Christ say, you know, most of my friends are not members of the church. That's, that's not a good thing. Amen. That's not a good thing. Uh, yeah, amen. So uh, have, have a relationship with folk uh, that are in uh, uh, the church. Okay? So the family is, prior, is prioritized when uh, there is this sense of commitment, uh, the family is preserved. As we've talked about, the family unit is under vicious attack. Uh, that's nothing new. that has been that way from the beginning. Uh, the devil's temptation of Adam and Eve in many ways was attack against what God had organized as far as family was concerned. Uh, he attacked the, the first family and, uh, and led them to a fall. And, and since then, he's been launching attacks because God's church, um, or God, the family, uh, I believe, is the foundational stone of society, of the world. We looked Sunday morning in the Bible class at the three great ages and how that family flows through each one and how that God prioritized and used family in each one of those ages, mosaic, a patriarchal, mosaical, and even uh, the Christian age. So we know, uh, as we talked about uh, last night, we're, we're in a war. It's not a battle against flesh and blood. You know Ephesians chapter 2, uh, chapter 6, verses 10 and following, about being strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And, the, and, and how that the, the Christians got to uh, do battle because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, etc., etc. The devil is out there working. Uh, and and, and uh, I believe that, that his work is to attack anything that God calls good and God has established. He's attacked the, uh, on the church uh, and also, I believe, upon the family. We need good, strong families. And in, in the midst of, of the ungodly world we're, we're, we're living in, uh, it's important for us to work hard, is what I want to say, uh, to preserve our families. Uh, as we've already talked about Noah, uh, the world was in bad shape. It was corrupt. It was wicked. Uh, thoughts and intents of man's heart was only evil continually uh, there in Genesis 6, verses 6 and 7. Uh, and we talked about the fact that we can see the results of, uh, of the devil's work, I believe. That, that comes into play when we look at the divorce rates, when we look at uh, the rate of children being born out of, out of wedlock, the homicides, the robberies, the uh, identity theft <laughs> that's going on today. 
uh, use and the scourge of, of, of drugs and alcohol abuse is still uh, a problem, economic dilemmas uh, that we are dealing with. Uh, even from a uh, spiritual aspect, as far as the growing rate of denominational churches and religious groups uh, that create a wider gap of relig in, in religious division. The world's in bad shape. And, and so many of these things are a threat to the preservation of the family. But even though this world is in bad shape, Noah preserved his family. All right? And that's what God wanted him to do. Get your family and get them into the ark in Genesis chapter 7, verses 1 and 13. So I'm just encouraging us that we must work to preserve our families, guard against those things that would divide and destroy our families uh, because the devil would try to get in there and destroy it. And certainly when it comes to our church family, amen, the devil can get busy in here too. Amen, somebody. But let's not allow him uh, to do that. We must... Uh, uh, have the attitudes and actions that keep the physical family and the church family preserved. Now, last night, uh, we looked at uh, Colossians, and you remember uh, the sandwich, how that in verse number 17, uh, he talked about the authority of Christ, and then in verse number 23 uh, tw through 25, uh, he talked about the as unto Christ. And in the middle of those verses was family. But even, uh, even you know, what he says here in, in, the, uh, in the book of Colossians applies uh, in chapter 3, uh, before he talked about the family in specific, uh, he said something that's for the church family and for the nuclear family. In verse 12, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved. Uh, now, notice he starts off, Reminding us of the connection we have. Remember those, that, 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 that pie and the two largest pieces were the, were the willpower and the influence of God. Now willpower without the influence of God, okay, uh, that, don't, that don't work, all right? And that we can have God's spirit, but we've got to have some yielding will ourselves, okay? Don't present, do present your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, okay? So you are the elect of God. So put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, forgiving each other. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you must also do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. So uh, we must make sure that we prioritize our families, that we work to preserve our families. And then uh, under this particular one, commitment uh, also means uh, that uh, that, that the family is held as precious, more precious than anything else. Again, going back to Nehemiah 4, where we mentioned that the people were told to fight for their families. They had to be willing to give their lives for their families. Uh, they had to be willing to die for their families if necessary. Uh, uh, when it comes to commitment, uh, when you talk about being committed to Christ, how do you know if one is committed? What's the one thing that would tell you if a person is really committed? How much money they give? No, 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 no. You remember Peter in Luke 22 and 23 when the Lord said, Satan has desired you, he may shift you as wheat. I pray for you when you're converted, stretching your breath. No, no, Lord. Hey, I'm with you, bro. I mean, I'm ready to go to prison and to death. Lord, I am committed. All right, you say you're committed to the Lord? Guess what? Somebody's going to test your commitment. Devil's sitting back saying, okay, let's see. Let's see. All right? A little bit later on, Jesus is taken. What happens when Peter's challenged? Three times. And the third time, he's sure enough going to show that he ain't one of Christ's disciples, okay? Uh, 
Okay? Because of threat. He didn't do that. Okay. Now let's flip the script over to Acts 3 and Acts 4. He's threatened and even beaten. And yet, when they let him out of jail, and he said, go back and preach it again. He goes back and does it. What's the difference between the Peter in, there in Luke and the one there in Acts? The Peter in Luke said, said, I'm willing to die. The Peter in Acts 4 was actually willing to die. That's when you committed to Christ, when, you, when you're actually willing to die, all right, for the cause of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so we have to be willing to uh, give ourselves for uh, our families. Give ourselves uh, in order to uh, allow the Lord to help me to bring happiness to my mate. I have to die to myself. All right? Because there's some things I, I want. Y'all remember I mentioned the other night uh, about, you know, you know, families that we came from, in my family where I came from, we kept the toothpaste tube squeezed neatly from the bottom. Oh, country girl, they just pick up a tube and squeeze it. And I ain't got time to tell you how ugly I acted fussing about how the toothpaste tube was squeezed. Okay, uh, I might say a little bit more about that later at the, at the last ending portion of our, of our workshop when we talk about some of, uh, you know, some of that. But it, it, it finally came to a point where I had to die to self. Okay, where I had to die to self because really how important. <laughs> Hell, it was important to me then, but <laughs> anyway. Anyway, uh, and even young folk, children, if you're listening, hold your family as precious. Amen. You're benefiting greatly. There are children that wish they had your family. Amen. I used to work with Agape Child and Family Services, uh, and that was an agency that help handle adoptions and foster care. There are children that are looking for good families to love them. Learn to appreciate. I, I, I know that, you know, sometimes mom and dad are kind of old fogey. We ain't, you know, you know there, there's some things that give us a headache. Uh, amen. Uh, we recently had an activity at East Jackson, and so we... Uh, uh, did some commercials to advertise that uh, on this station that we have our radio program on, but it ain't the old folks station. It ain't old school station. Okay, it's young folks station. So I wanted to, you know, hear when they played the commercials. So I tuned my radio, radio to that station, and every day I came home with a headache. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it is I never heard our commercial. I came home with a headache because that, that kind of music is just not my kind of music. All right? Just not my kind of music. You know, my son, when he was younger, you know, he thought he was going to be a rapper. And I said, fine. Be an educated rapper. You know, go to college, get you some schooling. And just go head on and rap. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but children... You've got a precious gift in your mom, Amen. especially a single mom, and she's struggling hard. You've got a precious gift. Amen. And I hope that you'll, you'll, you'll appreciate, that you will appreciate that, that gift, all right? Even as we'll be talking about uh, 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 a little bit later, okay? All right, all right, I better, I better move on. Uh, let's talk about... Uh, Let's talk about love. Let's talk about the, the, the need for godly love, charity. And you probably have already 
been taught about various words in the Greek language uh, when it comes to love. Their, their language is a bit more clear and expressive than ours, you know. I can say I love my wife. I love uh, White Castles, because I got me some of the day. <laughs> Amen. Brother, Brother Best made a run for me today. Amen. My see to it guy saw to it. Uh, and I had me some White Castles. Uh, down in Tennessee, I got to drive two hours to get a White Castle. Uh, amen. But I, I love my wife. I love White Castles. Uh, you know, I love my dog. I love my cat. But, you know, we say the same word. But if you love your dog and your wife, I mean, your if White Castles and your wife are the same, something wrong. <laughs> Greeks. Uh, Storge, I think that's the first blank on your list there. Uh, family love, love for uh, uh, father uh, and, and to children, and children the father. Philadelphia, phileo, phileo uh, brotherly love, let brotherly love continue. Uh, and to brotherly kindness, uh, charity. Uh, but then the kind of love that God loves us with really has an element of all, and the family love has an element of all, but agape uh, love, which is that uh, unconditional, unconditional goodwill that, that God wants us to have within the body of Christ, within the world as we live, but especially as well as also uh, in the family. We see it described in 1 Corinthians 13 as... Uh, Love that is patient, uh, it is generous, it is courteous, it is uh, sincere, it is kind, it is humble. Uh, it's, it, 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 it's a love uh, that, that, that is guileless. So all of the things that, that say what, and, and, and in fact, good test for me is go back and read 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. And whenever it says charity, you may have heard this before, put your name there. And see, does it read right? Mm -hmm. Lavelle is <laughs> long-suffering and kind. Okay. Okay. Something to think about. However, let me let me bring it down to to uh, uh, where we are. Uh, here is the Hayes definition of agape love. See how this clicks with you. It's a love that says, no matter how I feel or what you do, I must always conduct myself in a loving, benevolent, graceful fashion toward you. No matter how I feel, of what you do. Because some days we don't feel like. All right? And you younger women, y'all claim a certain time of month, y'all got a right to go crazy. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> but no matter how I feel, all right? Because some days I don't, I don't feel that cool. Y'all remember me telling the other night about that, that coming home thing when those two lanes come down to one and bruh man caught me on the wrong day. And I just was determined that you're not going to make a right turn on red and just bogart in front of me today. Okay. I ain't saying that was right, y'all. I had to say, Jesus, have mercy. Forgive me. Okay. Uh, uh, no matter how I feel or what you do, because you don't always act right. You may inadvertently or purposefully say or do something that bothers me, even in the church. All right? I, I, most of the time I would hope that is inadvertent, but, uh, you know, Jesus, Peter says, when he was reviled, reviled not again. 
All right? He didn't, he didn't respond with threats and, and, and that kind of thing when, when others spoke ill toward him. No matter how I feel or what you know. You remember what I said uh, last night? It's easier to behave your way into a better feeling, way of feeling, than it is to feel your way into a better way of behaving. And I mentioned about Matthew 5, 43 and following. Love your enemies. Pray for those that despitefully use you. Romans 12. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If you're thirsty, give him drink. Okay? So no matter how I feel, because let me see what you think about this one. I must do that because I never have the right to not act right. But you don't, know, you don't know what they said to me. You don't know what they did to me. Now, that might be somebody here that disagrees with that. All of, I, I, of all the time I've presented this, I've had maybe one person, but I don't think that what they presented will hold water. I never have the right to not respond in a godly manner as God would have. That doesn't mean we let folk run over you and stuff like that. Jesus didn't do that until he was allowed it to be his time to go to the cross. There were times when he escaped. He went away from the situation. Uh, there were times that he, he dealt with it. And of course, you know uh, that with everyday folk, Jesus was a lot nicer than he was with the Pharisees and the scribes. You read Matthew 23, I mean, he just kind of came down the line uh, with them. So that's not, that's not what this is saying. Uh, but when it comes to the kind of love that God wants us to exhibit in the family, I never have the right to not act right. Certainly I don't have the right to act right if she's squeezing the toothpaste in the middle. <laughs> but I don't have the right to not act right if she's defending the son that she loves. Or at least trying to help me look at the picture a little bit differently. Okay? In fact, you know, in 51 years, really there's only been one time one time where I could have really <laughs> when it came to my wife. Just one time. I still remember it clearly to this day. I bought the, my, my uh, daughter this game called Simon. It's got four different colors. And you start off, it'll light up one color, you press, you follow what it said. It'll light up two colors the next time. It lights up three colors the next time. It lights up four. And I'm sitting there, and I am in the zone. <laughs> because it goes through 31, se 32 sequences. All right? I am in the zone. You know, I've hit the 14, light up 14. I hit them all in the 15. I mean, what, 30? I'm on 31. On my way to the victory at 32. And she come in there and ask me some question about what I want for dinner or something like that. Broke my concentration. That's the only time in the course of our marriage I wanted to go bury her in the backyard somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> no matter how I feel, I don't have the right. I think I do, but I'm hanging on the cross. Boy, if I've got a right now, and y'all down there mocking me while I'm hanging here, and I've suffered a beating, and I'm in pain. I got something to say to y'all. Well, not to you all. Father, forgive them.
they know not what they do. That's the kind of love we, 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 we need to practice. And, and I know <clears throat> that, you know, we, we, we may not always be successful at the beginning, but, uh, you know, maybe we'll talk a little bit on tomorrow night uh, as far as some, some things that are, that are connected with that. Let me, let me go a little bit further. Let, let me just pause and ask you to think because uh, I want to ask you to make it personal Have there been time, at any time, where you did not exhibit this agape love? Think about it. What, what did he or she, or whether it was mom, dad, son or daughter, whatever, you didn't exhibit agape love? Yes, sir. If you what? If I say something to somebody, right? And they both look at it because if somebody says something to me that offend me, right? And I I don't I don't accept you in the in you know with the love and love. I don't I don't accept, you know, I kind of you know, you know, go over a little bit, I put it that way. Okay, I understand that. That's wrong. But the person that says something to offend you. Uh, the question is for those, I'm sure those out there in Never Neverland uh, cannot, may not be able to hear the audience, but uh, when it comes to agape love and somebody does say something that offends you uh, and you're saying that maybe... Right. So I know I'm wrong. Right. I know I'm wrong, so I apologize. Right. But the person that says something to offend you, if he's a Christian too, that's something you should right. do also. Right. So we both so right. we both wrong. All right. So yeah. yeah, what he's saying is that like a situation in the church where somebody offends me, I am offended and I respond back in an offensive way. You know, I come back, I recognize that I've done wrong and I apologize and then we expect that the other person will apologize too. Of course, we know what the Bible teaches. It says, if you have all against your brother, you go between he and thee alone and, and, and try to do it. However, understand that, and, uh, uh, understand that when it comes to the love that, that we show, and even when it comes to uh, uh, forgiving, uh, the forgiveness is on me and even if a person does not, uh, my position is that even if a person does not apologize, say they're sorry, that's on them and God. I can't make them, and ain't no sense of me being, being mad or uh, having malice in my heart, Ephesians chapter 4, uh, against them, all right? Uh, because I've been in that same situation as far as even uh, dealing with church and church leadership and that, that kind of thing. Never got a, a, an apology, okay? And, uh, uh, you know, some, some things were done that, that upset my wife, and I was ready to, well, <laughs> I wasn't in a good mood, okay? Uh, but I just uh, removed myself from it uh, and, and, and went on, and the Lord blesses. So, uh, uh, it, you know, the Bible says in Romans 12, as much as lies within you, live peaceably with all men. So don't walk around holding it, okay, that the person has not apologized. You leave that, <coughs> leave that in the hands of God, and you still love them anyway. You, you still show them, you, you still show them that love because you have a relationship with God Almighty. Because having resentment, you know what resentment is like? 
Resentment is like me drinking the poison and expecting him to die. If you have resentment in your heart towards somebody, you, you ain't, you're not punishing them. It's like you drinking the cyanide, you drinking the poison, and, it look, and waiting for them to kill over. <clears throat> not going to happen. All right? Uh, as much as lies within you, and yes, sometimes some situations take a lot of prayer. Okay? There, you know, there may be those, and, and, and we know that, that even after breakups of marriages and, and things like that, sometimes hurts go on a long time in those situations. I'm not ignorant to that, not blind to that, okay? But it goes back to where we began, the influence of God and strength of will. God helped me just day by day, all right, to, 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 to work on, to carry through, and to have the spirit that you would have me to have, knowing that, that I, I, I'm going to receive the blessings from you in my life. Okay, all right, appreciate, uh, uh, appreciate that. Um, so think about that. What did they say? What did they do? How did you respond? Okay, now, this is what I would encourage of you. Think about what you're going to do the next time that fits agape love. If I didn't respond right this time, what's my plan? All right. Well, you know, Sister Hayes will tell you that I, 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 there were a couple of things I didn't exhibit that kind of love. You know, one of those had to do with, you know, my, my wife has a habit, a way of asking questions uh, that I deem obvious questions. You know, I'm, I'm speaking in Memphis on Saturday, on Friday. Okay, how are we going to do this? Well, at that time, she's working. Uh, I'm going to take you to work that day. Uh, you dress appropriately for where we're going. Uh, when you get off from work, I'll pick you up. We'll hit the road down to Memphis, stop at mile marker 56, where there's a Kentucky Fried Chicken that has a buffet. We'll eat and go on down to Memphis. Okay, sound good. Thursday come. Now, how are we doing this? <laughs> And back in the day, brethren, I didn't respond right. Okay? But as we'll see on tomorrow night, you got to have a plan. All right? We had to work on a plan. All right? Because I, I've got to do differently, uh, but no matter what. Because I hear you guys. I hear you. You know, problem solved. She just quit asking questions. All right? <laughs> but... Don't work that, that way all the time, okay? So, so we, we, we've got we've to have. Let me, let me briefly, uh, we'll abbreviate this uh, just a little bit. But just think about that. It's a good exercise. What you going to do next time? Husbands, wives, mothers and fathers, sons and daughters. What you going to do differently next time? That's agape love, okay? All right? But under that, let me add... Uh, the fact that uh, families need to express uh, appreciation and affection, all right, uh, to build emotional well-being in the family. All right, we, we, we like to know that we are appreciated. Uh, we like to know that, 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 that uh, others appreciate us, and then there needs to be there are strong families, uh, biblically and research-wise, uh, learn to appreciate, all right? Uh, we, we know that we have the outer man and we have the inner man, all right? Uh, the inner man uh, experiences emotions, happiness, sadness, peace, distress, calm, anger, love, hate, etc. Right? We have examples within the scriptures of, of people, uh, uh, of emotional uh, situations, of people expressing emotions. Nehemiah, 
had an expression of sadness on his face when the king saw him because of what Nehemiah had heard about the condition of Jerusalem. Uh, Isaiah 65, 14 talks about joy of the heart and sorrow of the heart and vexation of the spirit. Uh, Matthew 9, 36, Jesus is moved with compassion. Ephesians 4, 26 through 32 talks about anger, bitterness, malice. It also talks about kindness, tenderheartedness, and, uh, and uh, uh, forgiveness, okay? The uh, thing about it is, I'm of the impression that when there is, when you talk about the outer man suffering pain and the inner man suffering pain, the inner man pain is, is different. Maybe it's more difficult. Maybe we might say even more painful in some ways, okay? Because of the fact that, yes, the outer man's pain can affect what the inner man does, and the inner man's can affect what the outer man does. I can be stressed, worried about something, and have headaches, muscle aches, uh, ulcers, and, and other, things, other things like that. Uh, so I, 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 I tend to think that the, the inner man's pain is, is more uh, intense. Uh, and uh, therefore, emotional well-being is, is, uh, is important. It's important in the family. Uh, we, we like uh, appreciation. And even though we, we, uh, we like to feel appreciated, sometimes it's difficult to show appreciation. Maybe it's a cultural norm, except on the basketball court or the football field, men are socialized to where it's okay for them to show anger in public, but it's more embarrassing for men to show joy and affection. Uh, men are not embarrassed to show their hard side, their macho side in public, but men are more embarrassed to show the softer side in public, unless it's in a protected setting like a ball game or, or something like that. And when it comes to appreciation and affection, you know, somebody might say, well, my family of origin, we were not a touchy-feely family. And that's okay. That's okay. However, it may be that you may need to work on that in some ways because there are some times when it's got to be touchy-feely. Okay? Once, once worked with a family where six-year-old, six-year-old, six or eight, I forget the age now, uh, but young child, six, eight years old, and they had whipped the child so bad they left whips that came to the attention of the Department of Children and Family Services. And they were going to remove the child from the home, except we had a program then that would go in the home and work with some families if they qualified. So we went in and worked with them. Uh, as we worked with the family, uh, uh, you know, what we saw was the parents' frustration. They had whipped this child so bad because uh, they were trying to get the child to behave and they were using the, 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 the whippings to do it, but it wasn't working and the more they did that, it seemed, the more the child misbehaved and so one day, you know, dad just lost it and, and went above and beyond, went overboard, okay? But you know what we ascertain? What we ascertain is that the only time that these parents really touched that child was when they were disciplining that child. Now, while the Children and Family Services is involved in overseeing, they can't use corporal punishment. So what we had to help them to learn to do was to touch in neutral and good circumstances and to withdraw the touch and the emotion in the bad circumstances. So certainly we had to teach them, you know, time out and stuff like that. And so what, what we had to really work hard with them to do is when the child is not doing anything bad, neutral situation, or when the child does something they especially want the child to do, touch, praise, hug, lay your hand on the child, you know. Uh, and then... When it came to the bad stuff, that's when the touch was withdrawn. Now the child, again, children are not thinking this out. Hey, I'm not getting touched. I'm a child I won't touch. 
I found out that if I act out, I get touched. Now, it ain't good touch, but it's touch. And they're not thinking that out, but that's the way that it worked. And so we were successful in that case with this parents learning to touch their child, to praise their child in neutral or positive situations because it's easy enough, it's easy enough. So uh, what we have to learn to do is to, is to dig for diamonds, all right? We have to dig for diamonds. Uh, don't, don't, don't hold the dirt and discard the diamonds. You know, uh, the, the diamond miners, they dig through tons of rocks and dirt looking for the diamond. What do I look like digging through tons of rock and dirt? I find the diamond, I throw the diamond away and keep the dirt. But, you know, we human beings can be good at that, all right? Uh, families too often tend to do just the opposite. We sweep aside the diamonds and we hold on to the, on to the dirt. Jesus was a diamond miner. You going to Zacchaeus' house? You going to eat with a sinner? Don't you know who Zacchaeus is? He's a publican. Hello? Jesus, was, he dug for diamonds. He's also a son of Abraham. With the Samaritan woman, Jesus is digging for diamonds. With Peter, you know, I pray for you. When you are converted, strengthen your brother. You're going to do better down the road than I know you're going to do in the next few hours. Saul of Tarsus, oh, who would go talk to Saul of Tarsus? Even when God came to Ananias and said, go, bap- go there and baptize him, Saul said, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Saul? <laughs> okay. God, the Lord, dug for diamonds. Uh, I believe that's a, bi- a biblical principle. Uh, think on these things. All right, think on these things. True, noble, just, pure, lovely, of good report. We have to learn to, to focus ourselves on, on uh, uh, the, these things. And that takes a little work, y'all. It takes a little work, but it can bring forth some marvelous, marvelous results. Okay? This is a tough one. Because if you can't find no diamonds... Maybe the problem is not in the other person. Didn't somebody say to the pure? All things are pure. Titus 1 and verse number 5. To the unbelieving, nothing is pure. Even their mind and conscience are divided. So if you can't find no diamonds, ooh, Lord, have mercy. Okay. Uh, but then, not only dig for diamonds, display your delight. Show affection. Uh, my little children, love not in word or in speech, but in deed and in truth. So family members must learn to express appreciation to one another. Say it verbally. Find some good things to say. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm so glad. Even, even this afternoon, you know, we're in the hotel room. My wife is... You know, it's right over there. Uh, but when I finally pick up my phone, okay, I see a text from my wife. And she does what she usually does. You know, she, she finds all these love notes and stuff, something online, sends me this text that said, <laughs> you know, and, and, and that kind of thing. And, and uh, you know, I, 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 I appreciate that. I appreciate that. You know, I tried to stop during the course of the day. Hey, I call. I just wanted to hear your voice. After 51 years, I still want to hear her voice. See, how you doing? Okay, what's going on over there? All right. So we have to express it uh, verbally. Uh, this is not a marriage seminar, but, but husbands, uh, don't just let it be it's that time affection. It ought to be affection all the time. All right? All right? It ought to be affection all the time. Okay? Uh, I've seen some, cra- some, what I thought was weird surveys. Uh, and one of them blew my mind. This was a survey, and I forget how many thousands of women, about when is, is your husband most sexy? 
You know what the number one answer was? When he's at the sink washing dishes. <laughs> when he's at the sink washing dishes. So it's the girl, y'all didn't wash dishes, they're going to get washed tonight. <laughs> Show affection. Show. And, and men, let it be that, that non-sexual affection. Okay? Uh, uh, show it. Say it verbally. Show it physically. So exercise. You know, what do you appreciate about your children? What are some diamonds? Write them down. Then go tell them. And make sure you tell them often. And I think if we tell them often from the diamond part, it'll be less often. Okay? I'm trying to quit, but we reinforce what we recognize. If we always recognize the negative, even if you would recognize it in a negative way, guess what, y'all? It's been proven that we reinforce what we recognize. Even that couple I told you about with the young child, they were, they were reinforcing bad behavior by all the time recognizing that bad behavior and no time recognizing the good behavior. So learn to dig for diamonds, to start with the smallest thing and build your husband up, build your wife up, okay? Build your children up. And children, there's some diamonds in your parents. Go tell them, boy, thank you. All right? Thank you. I had a soft bed to sleep in last night. I know I couldn't have done that by myself. Mom, I, I appreciate you. But certainly one of the things I would caution is not just appreciate things, appreciate characteristics of people. And then uh, children, what do you appreciate about your parents? Tell them. Keep on making a list. Don't stop at three things. Keep on making a list and tell them, all right? And then be determined to develop because the, 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 the harvest you get, because you, you know, cause I had time, I, I talked about the fact, well, you, hey, you don't know the folk I live with, okay? But I've learned that nothing happens in a void, all right? If something is happening, What's happening is that there is this action and interaction that's going on and sometimes we don't, we don't know, we don't, we don't see. But you reap what you sow. So maybe what you need to do is check out and see if you're planting and cultivating the right seed and keep on doing that and don't be discouraged. This is going to take me about five minutes probably, but just please allow me that. A 15-year-old son. We're living in Springfield, Illinois. And we're going to go to a teacher's workshop in Chicago, a few hours away from Springfield. So we're going to ride the church bus. But we've got to make sure this 15-year-old boy is taken care of. So what we do is... Uh, we arranged with Sister Nolan, who has a son uh, about his age, that after school, you pack in your knapsack stuff that you'll need for an overnight stay, and you go to Sister Nolan's house. And here's some money to give Sister Nolan, because I know you can eat. She's a single parent. I don't want to put that pressure on her. Okay, Sister Girl, let's, let's, let's get ready. The, the church bus is about to be here. Sister Girl... Where are my keys? I can't, I can't find my keys nowhere. We, we, we turned the house literally upside down looking for her key. Can't find her keys nowhere. Okay, but the church van is out there. We got to go. We'll, we'll have to look for them when we get back. So we get on the van and we go on this overnight stay. And the next day, Saturday, we come back. Church van pulls up to drop us off. I look at my wife, I say, my car has been moved. Oh, you know, you know, you know, I, you know. Oh, my car has been moved. And 
Now leave it alone. So you, you listen to Sister Girl. I got a suspicion of something that happened here. Walk in, go into the bedroom to put our suitcase out, and there her keys are right at the foot of the bed on the floor. Okay. Go to church the next day. Shaking hands. Brother so-and-so walks up. Hey, I didn't know I was, Isaac was driving. I saw him. <laughs> saw him. That boy has taken his mama's keys, taken my car, picked up some friends, gone joyriding, and even drove on the freeway, ain't got no license, said laying on our insurance. Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I am. You done lied. You done stole our car. You done sneaked your mama's keys. What's the big deal? Didn't nothing happen. Incredible Hulk is about to... I'm highly upset. And because I feel that his attitude is not one of penitence, I'm even more upset. Because when I'm, 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 I'm sending that lecturing about, you know, what if you hit somebody driving on the freeway? You know, what? Well, all these things. We could have been sued by the parents of the other. I mean, you know, I'm going through all this and it's like, From that day, you remember what the Bible said about Joseph's brothers? That they could not speak a peaceable word? I am so upset that it colors every interaction. And every time he does something, now I'm, you know, what you what, what's what you doing now? I mean, it's <laughs> imagine the atmosphere that that has created, and then the peacemaker, the, the the one that came from the family of origin that brought in this peacemaking kind of concept mindset, is unsuccessfully trying to make peace. So even now we ain't got no peace. I cannot describe the atmosphere in our house for several months. It was not a peaceable house. It was not a peaceful house. And that influence of God thing I told you about, I, I believe in it. Because one night we, we, we'd gone somewhere and it was far, a pretty good drive away. I don't know why I spoke it up, but it was, it was in the middle of the night that we was driving back. And we tried to have a discussion again in the car. <laughs> Didn't work. So Sister Girl turns her, her body toward the passenger door, and finally she falls off to sleep. And I'm driving down the road. <sighs> and then something hit me. And I hit my wife. I said, Pat, 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 wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. She jumped up like, you know, because she thought maybe we was having some accident on the road. I said, I know what the problem is. I know what it is. I haven't forgiven I need to forgive Isaac. So we get back and I, 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 I get Isaac and I'm talking, and of course what he's expecting is the same old thing, and I just said, son, I forgive you. You didn't ask for it. 
He breaks down in tears and says, Dad, with you I just didn't know how. That allowed the Lord to just reach down and suck all that ugly air out of my house. When I just began to practice what I preach in, in the middle of the night, driving down the road, the word of God touches me to the extent where I recognize it's on me. I'm the adult anyway, right? I'm the preacher too, right? I've had more years in the faith than my son, right? It's on me to exhale. I don't know if that's where any of you are tonight. But we're going to be singing a song in just a moment. Maybe you need to just start with you and just exhale. Just say, church, just, just pray for God to work in our house and help us with our struggle. Have and you if, been hold, to... Hold on, just, just one minute. Oh, just a minute. Just a minute. Because we also want to uh, uh, say to those that are outside of the body of Christ that when it comes to us being forgiven of our sins... God's willing and ready to do it. But he's giving us some instructions on how to receive that. Okay? If you get uh, something in the mail that says this something is yours, it'll have some instructions on what you need to do in order to receive that gift. It's yours, but you've got to follow the instructions of what it, may, what it takes to receive it. You've got to hear the gospel. The fact that Jesus died, buried, and resurrected for our sins. You got to believe that with all of your heart. Repent and turn to God, Acts 319, that your sins may be blotted out. If we be believe, we're going to confess with our mouths, not confess our sins. There's a time for that, but the confession that's made here is the Romans 10:10 10, 10, confession unto salvation like the eunuch did when he stated, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and then be buried with Christ. And God cleanses us from all of our sins. We rise up to walk in the newness of life. So if that's you, the invitation is for you. If you're standing in need of prayer, the invitation is for you. If you've fallen short of the glory of God, this invitation is for you. Let's stand together.